Well, well, well. It's been a while. <laughs> no, actually, it hasn't been for you, but for me, yes, because I haven't told you this, but last week's video, which I hope it's gonna be <laughs> last week's video and not two, the video from two weeks ago, um, I recorded that like a month ago or something, in, at the beginning of July. Now it's now it's August, um, so yeah, I haven't read the story in like a month. Uh, anyway, but I'm ready today to continue. Not so because I don't, I don't know why I gave you this intro. Like nobody really cares about um, when I record the videos. But anyway, let's get to it. Because when you when you start with some action in a story, then more action will follow. And the next chapter is chapter fifteen, and it's called under attack and there's gonna be some some attack here <laughs> some some more action uh going on not well described but still action anyway the chapter where what did the last chapter end all ah, right with um uh, what are the names <laughs> see it's been so long i don't even remember the names of the main characters so we have marika manhattan and Kirian. Um, in the previous chapter, the previous chapter ended with the three of them, they were like talking in Kieran's room or something, um, trying to comfort him, um, blah blah. Now it's, um, they're still there. Oh, it says it's almost mid July. Ah, shit. I would have loved to record this in almost mid July. Um, and I'm still wondering why are they still around? Why are they still at Killian's place? Weren't they like, oh, Manhattan has to go home, spend some time with his family? No, apparently that's not, uh, that doesn't really matter anymore. But anyway, if, I think um, even in the next chapter or in the next two, they're gonna go back to Onal, to Manhattan's family. Anyway, that's <laughs> already talking for two minutes um, about nothing. Um, it's the day after they're outside in the garden, and I decided it was important to let everyone know that today Dorian is wearing socks with boats, Marika socks with bats, and Manhattan uh, socks with lemons on them. Amazing. Um, at the beginning of this chapter, there's just this boring blah blah blah, boring boring of Kirian being like, oh, no, I gotta go to the second world, and Kirian, no, and Julian being like, Oh no, we're going to the second world, blah blah, boring stuff. Um, um, and Manhattan, Manhattan is always so random. He joins them and he goes straight to the point. He's like, I've been wondering for a while, what were you guys doing when a connection took place? <laughs> and I mean, we as readers, we already know that, so... This, I've added this just because um, I wanted to introduce something that I could have introduced before, but I've decided, I don't know, man. Or maybe I just needed some more text. But anyway, uh, I'm going to get in a second to what I, um, I think I wanted to add. Um, Marika says, me and Dorian, or Dorian and I, were on a rooftop of a building after a mission. Kirin says, I was drunk and I don't remember much. We just talk about blah, blah, blah. Kirin didn't remember, but Julian helped him remember. And Manhattan says, I was camping with my friends and I passed out when it happened. And Marika is surprised. She asks, you passed out? And Dorian says, maybe he got overwhelmed due to the... Due to, uh, due to the... <laughs> due to the amount of people involved in the connection. And Manhattan asks, I wasn't supposed to? And says, and Dorian says, no, no one is supposed to. And Manhattan adds this thing that I'm like, I mean, first, first of all, okay, um, Manhattan wasn't supposed to. Okay, that's really strange. But anyway, Manhattan adds, mm, I don't remember exactly, but before passing out, I actually felt overwhelmed by a lot of things, blah, blah, blah. This, we, we all know that cancer is, is a weird stuff. And then he says, I saw images of, it was something I've never seen before. The images didn't come from my memories. And I'm wondering, why didn't we see this? 
when Manhattan was experiencing the connection. Because I, um, it, it kind of does make sense with how the story will go. Um, but why, why didn't I show this during the connection? Because I'm pretty sure I didn't show it. Right? Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Marika just says, oh, that's really interesting. Never heard of anything like that. And Julian says, oh, me neither. But then the discussion ends there. Like, they, they don't, they don't, I don't know, um, discuss this any further. Then it's night. Kirian, Dorian and Manhattan are sitting outside. But more specifically, Kirian and Dorian are sitting outside on a bench smoking a cigarette while Manhattan is sleeping, laying his head on Kirian's lap. Why? Then Marika joins them. Um, Kirian, <laughs> and, and no, Marika, Marika is looking at Manhattan sleeping. Um, Kirian asks her, are you looking at Manhattan or my crotch? <laughs> anyway. Um, and, and Marika notices Dorian and Kirian are being really stupid, like laughing at stupid stuff. And she realizes, I mean, Kirian tells her, um, he had some weed around and he wanted to have some before leaving or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't really... I don't know. Um, and Marika's like, guys, did you give some to Manhattan as well? Um, and they said no, but then they actually admit they did. And I'm like... And, and Marika, like, she laughs at, at it. And, and I mean, I agree, I would have laughed as well, you know. But I'm also wondering, Marika, weren't you the one that didn't want... I mean, okay, fine. Uh, weed is, is better than alcohol, but, I mean, still. But no, Marika was being all protective of Manhattan, so wasn't she supposed to be worried about him smoking weed? Ah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, and then Marika, <laughs> really random as well, um, she, she, she asks... Uh, I remind you, uh, Manhattan is sleeping, okay? She asks, um, what are their names? Akira and Dorian. <laughs> um, she asks them, guys, what do you think of him? Him, meaning Manhattan. Um, and I'm like, Marika, what the fuck? You, you, you're really um, losing points, because Manhattan, yes, he's there. He seems to be sleeping, but what if, it, what if he's faking? Why are you asking these kind of questions? With Manhattan present, even if he's asleep, but like, didn't you have any other moment throughout the day to ask them this? No. Um, so yeah, she asked them what, what they think of Manhattan. And Kirian is being inappropriate as always, and he says, if I didn't have Julian, I probably... F and then he didn't finish the sentence, because when it's like, it's like, please say no more. And I mean, Kirian, we're not interested in your sexual fantasies about Manhattan. Um, and Kirian says, I was joking. Um, and then he says, I don't know, he's like a kid, I guess. And Dorian um, says, um, yeah, I know what you mean, Malika. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit suspicious of Manhattan as well um, because of how re he reacted the other day when they were at the table and he like played this game of throwing the bullet at Marika and expo basically exposing her and Dorian um, to everyone. And then and, and then Marika says, Onihal, the place uh, Manhattan is from, is a bit of a closed shell. It's hard to gather information of people there. And Kirin's like, what? Gather information? Why would you do something? Wait, did you do that with me too? Which I think I mentioned a couple of videos ago. Or maybe in the last, no, a couple of video videos ago, I think. Um, that uh, Dorian um, Marika found some some stuff, or, or that they, they did something not very nice uh, with Kitty and Manhattan, and that is they looked up information about them, like they have the files about them or something. Um, and Marika says, I just wanted to make sure I'm not paired up with some psychopath. And Kitty says, then what if you were? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That's a legit question. And Marika says, it's precaution. It's also a habit of my job to check on... It's a habit of my job to check on people. 
And Keenan says, stop talking about your job. It's not an excuse. You're not excused if you say that. I mean, fair enough. I mean, I like it how Keenan took it well, though. You know, the, the fact that, you know, Marika and Dorian are <laughs> basically assassins. Um, but I, I agree. I mean, Marika is always like, oh, my job, my job. Marika, we don't give a shit. Um, just shut up. And Kirian obviously asks uh, what kind of information they found about them. And Marika hands him her phone with all the files and stuff, um, which I, I, I think I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, but it wasn't anything interesting, or at least about Kirian. Then I don't know if they did, and if they did what they found about Manhattan. Um, no, actually they did find something about Manhattan, but we didn't know what, because Kirian deletes the files without looking at Manhattan's. So he doesn't, he, he, he erases his own files, but also the ones of Manhattan. I wonder how he got access to them, but that's not um, asked too many questions. Anyway, I've already talked for four with 10 minutes and we haven't got to the action yet. But now we get into that. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, uh, Killian and Manhattan go to sleep and Dorian and Marika are left alone. And Dorian says, well, truth be told, your instincts will never run so far. So, ha, 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 there is something up with either Manhattan or Killian or both. Um, okay, the day after, <laughs> they're in the living room chatting and relaxing. And I'm wondering, why are these people on holiday? Aren't they supposed to go back to Onehal? I, I don't know. I, th I think they've been there for like three or four days now. But it might have been more. Anyway, um, <laughs> today Dorian is wearing socks with books, Manhattan... Uh, with foxes and Marika with waves. These are pretty cool socks. Um, right, so they are in the living room chilling and relaxing. And Rose, um, she enters the room and she says, I, I need you all to follow me to the basement, which sounds very creep, which sounds very creepy, but it's just in a the basement there is the um, like monitoring room, like the security cameras and stuff. There's a room full of screens and like people tapping on keyboards and stuff. <laughs> I don't know what they're <laughs> typing. Um, um, and Rose shows them some people on the screens. There are eight people. I, I'm going to say it again. There are eight people armed wandering around the premises of Kieran's house. And I'm wondering how they got in. But anyway, um, and Dorian says, Mia, I think they're the same people who caused the accident. Um, and so Dorian is like, oh, okay, I mean, let's, no, I'm sorry, Marika is like, okay, uh, Rose, let us handle this, uh, this is our problem, we brought, brought this problem, uh, this problem, no, we brought this, <laughs> we brought this trouble here, um, so let us handle this, but uh, Rose is like, no, um, and the K team and I are gonna do this, you know, because like, like, Rose knows what she's talking about, that's her territory. Um, and she said, she adds, before leaving, she adds, we'll get rid of these people and leave as soon as possible. Oh, okay, so you are leaving, finally. And then she says, Mr. Kirian, if you could please inform Mr. Julian about the change of program. <laughs> What's the change of program? <laughs> um, then Rose goes with the cave team to take care of the of, of this nasty business. And Monica says, I'm sorry, I hope Rose and the others will be okay. I didn't mean to bring trouble. Kirian looks at the screen without with crossed arms. Don't underestimate the K-team. Um, they're shooting at each other. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's some dialogue, and then they're shooting at each other. Um, so yeah, they, they shoot at the intruders, and the intruders shoot back. Everyone gets a bit injured or whatever. Um, and Marika is seeing how uh, the K-team is, you know, also getting shot and stuff. So she decides to go, um, but before going, she, uh, obviously her and, and Dorian leave. Marika gives, uh, gives, Kirian, gives Kirian a phone, um, and she just uh, tells him, if, if you want to contact us, uh, press 1, and, and like she has an earpiece or something, in, so she can hear them, I don't know. Um, and Kirian says, Manhattan, you use the phone. And because Manhattan comes from, like, a rubber, I don't know, it's not really a poor country, but I guess it's less developed than the rest of the first world or something. 
Um, Manhattan's like, you're asking too much. <laughs> Kirin, you're such a bitch. Um, and Kirin and Manhattan are standing behind one of the guys in front of the screen. So I'm like, oh, okay, so there are people around there managing security. It's not just Manhattan with a phone he doesn't even know how to use. Um, and then Manhattan he starts asking weird questions. Um, now, okay, I mean, he asks a legit question, which is, are you scared? And Kirin says, well, of course I am. If that wallaby dies, we're done for too. But now, I don't know, Manhattan becomes weird. He asks Kirin, do you care about her only because your lives are bound together? I mean, that's a fair concern, but still a weird question. Kirin's like, what? <laughs> Manhattan goes, do you care about me only because our lives are bound together? And Kirin's like, no, of, of course not. And Manhattan goes on, why don't you like Marika? <laughs> Mind your own business, Manhattan. Um, and Kirin says, I don't feel particularly comfortable with her, but you care if she leaves or not, right? And Kirin is, is super confused, like, um, yeah? Only because Kansen is involved, asks Manhattan. And Kirin is just like, what the fuck? And then uh, he looks at the screen and he can see Marika is out of Amos. Two guys are following Marika and Dorian, but they, they didn't notice. And Kirin is thinking, of course I care. She's a person too, right? And then she goes, Manhattan, the phone! <laughs> and so Kirin gives direction to Marika and Dorian to go in this specific area with this, like, trees or something and he tells them that this specific tree has a fake branch because um, when they take out this fake branch quote there's a sniper rifle in it <laughs> but he goes like what <laughs> this is this is a rifle in, in a fucking tree um, Kirin says this, there should be a set of bullets and one of sedatives as well. Don't put the bullets, I don't want more dead bodies, but before he before can finish the sentence, Marika has, has already shot the guys, and she's like, sorry, what did you say? <laughs> um, and I'm thinking, because then Kirin gets mad, because uh, Marika shot these people dead, but I'm thinking, um, Rose did the same, so what's the difference? Also, I mean, seriously, how are they gonna cover this whole thing up? And then Marika rightfully asks, why the hell are hidden rifles inside of trees? <laughs> Kirin says, Rose is crazy. <laughs> um, and then Marika says, like, they talk a bit more, and then Marika says, well, thanks, Kirin. And Kirin's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then Marika and Dorian join them, I mean, the K-team, and they shoot at a few more people. And I want to remind you, weren't they just eight? I don't know. Um, and then uh, eventually they managed to take over the intruders. Um, some of them died, some of them escaped. Um, um, they secured the area and uh, Marika kneels down next to one of the bodies and she inspects them. And she finds an ID that identifies him, the person, the dead body, as a spy of the government. What? I mean, what government, first of all? And then, spy for what? And why are they killing civilians in a civilian's garden? Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, and also, I'm wondering, why were Marika and Dorian communicating with Kirian and and like also Rose, I think, was communicating with Kid, I don't know. Um, but not with the people managing security. Like there are people in front of the screens and managing their old stuff. Why aren't they communicating with the K team and Dorian and Monica? But uh, uh, Kidian is instead. Doesn't make sense. And then the chapter ends with some more what the fuck um, from Manhattan. So, okay, the situation. It's cool, um, you know, they, they secure the area and, and whatnot. Um, and Manhattan goes, so there are a few dead bodies in your garden. It appears so. It makes me feel a bit uneasy. Yeah, me too. This is obviously Kirin replying. They say nothing for some time. And then Manhattan says, 
Have you ever seen a dead person in real life? <laughs> Killian. <laughs> Rightfully so, thanks. What's it with the creepy question? <laughs> but then Killian turns to Manhattan and sees his expressionless, staring in front of himself and gripping tightly at his shirt. And Killian replies, No. And you? Manhattan doesn't reply and keeps on staring into space. Killian at this point is worried. He goes for touching Manhattan's shoulder. And then the chapter ends. <gasps> da, 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 da. Um, we it's we're almost done. This was I said was chapter fifteen. Okay, so um, I think four more chapters and then we finally get to the first. Sorry, uh, to to the second world. Um, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> and also have to refrain from reading everything beforehand and then talking about it because I don't know I, I, re I really want to go ahead and read um, but I don't want to cheat and then just I, I don't want to spoil the fun and the surprise to myself but anyway blah 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 I've talked I talked a lot today so um, enough um, thank you again for sticking around looking forward to tell you more about me a chance ha 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 okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> ciao